series of event. We're just waiting for a second to go live on Facebook and then we'll start. Thanks for your patience. We're just waiting for a second to go live. We ready, Artemis? No, I'm sorry. It's going to take one second. Okay, my apologies, it's not going live, but do you wanna get started and I will make sure that it does? <laughs> yeah. So welcome everyone on behalf of the Board of Directors of the Hellenic Initiative. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the fifth talk in THI's Digital Speaker Series event. Uh, and there could be no more timely Speaker Series event than to welcome the Mayor of Athens, Kostas Bakoyanis, as Greece has just opened its doors for the summer season. In June of 2019, Mr. Bakoyanis was elected mayor of Athens. In fact, it was the first election I ever got to vote in. Um, before that, he served as the governor of Central Greece from 2014 to 2019, and as mayor of Karpenisi from 2011 to 2014. Born and raised in Athens, Mayor Bakoyanis graduated from Brown University with a degree in history and international relations. He continued with his postgraduate studies in public policy at Harvard's Kennedy School of Government and then the University of Oxford for his PhD. And you can read about the rest of his many accomplishments on our website. Uh, like many people on this call, uh, I was not born here. However, I consider Athens my adopted city. Um, it has been my go-to happy place for most of my adult life. Uh, and I can remember my first visit back here in 1980 and the strong impression it left on me, one that could not be shaken. In fact, so much so that I moved here in 2007. Um, back then, Greece was on the upswing and so was Athens and Athens felt exciting. Then the financial crisis struck um, and uh, the economy tanked, unemployment soared. There were riots, there were demonstrations, there was vandalism. Athens felt a bit beaten up, but it survived all of this and in fact, even began to thrive thanks in large part to the ingenuity of its citizens. Previous mayors, including ones that we've worked with, did excellent work, but there was a dramatic change when Kostas Bakoyanis was elected. You immediately felt like someone was in the mayor's office who cared about Athens. And not just the neighborhood he lived in, but all the neighborhoods of Athens. Uh, from Pangrati to Koliatsu, from Ammonia to Elysia. The mayor walks around Athens. And you know how I know this? I know this because I see him everywhere, and in fact, Two days ago, I was riding my bike near my bicycle near Platea Victoria, and there was the mayor in the middle of the square. We were having some sort of press conference. So I'm, I'm seeing you all over the city, not just in the center. Um, so um, when COVID hit uh, and Athens went into lockdown, the easy thing to do would have been to take a break. But instead, this mayor embarked on an ambitious public works plan, one that you couldn't help but notice and feel proud about. And that is why if you follow him on social media, and we encourage you to do so on Facebook, on Twitter, and on Instagram, you will see that the mayor and his office are working all over the city to clean, repair, restore, and revitalize neighborhoods long forgotten by previous administrations. We are, I think we are beyond fortunate as a city to have someone with his talents, drive, and vision in this position. So thank you. Um, today's talk will be moderated by Pete Zervaikis, an anchor and reporter with WTMJ-TV, which is the NBC affiliate in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. We met Pete through his extraordinary mother, Harriet Konda Servaikis, who along with her husband and family have been generous supporters of THI. And like many Greeks in the diaspora, a family who even though removed from Greece for many generations, is still strongly attached to the homeland. 
Peake's work has been recognized by the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association, the Milwaukee Press Club, and the Wisconsin State Bar. Uh, his most memorable reporting assignment was an exclusive all Greek interview with NBA superstar Yanis Antetokounmpo that I would encourage all of you to watch on YouTube. Pete's very active in the Wisconsin Greek American community. He's a member of two churches, both Kimisis de Theotoko and the Greek Orthodox Church of Racine. Um, uh, and the Annunciation Greek Orthodox Church of uh, Milwaukee. Pete's also a member of THI's uh, new leaders group. So why does all of this matter to THI? THI wants to support leaders in their fields. We can think of no better example of people doing just that than Mayor Bakoyanis and Pete Zervaitis. And so finally, before we get started, I'd like to thank THI staff who've been working overtime since the COVID-19 crisis began. So thanks to all of you, Michael Princos, Maria Papastathi, Artemis Kohas, Cindy Kubele, Dean Sirigos, Tanya Misiriotti, Tina Kurpas, Tatiana Blotnik, and Nixis Manaikis. So thank you, Pete. I'm handing it over to you. Sounds good. Thank you, Peter. Uh, I think I'm going to have to convince you to uh, walk around everywhere with me and introduce me after that introduction. <laughs> um, and of course, thank you, Mayor Bakoyanis, for being with us. I wanted to jump right in with the lead, which I think is the Grand Walk. Um, this is an example, uh, Mayor of Athens taking what was for many people a negative of the lull of the lockdown and really turning it into a positive with infrastructure improvements. So uh, for those who are watching that might not be familiar with the Grand Walk, can you walk us through that project and also explain uh, where it is right now? Well, good evening from Athens. And let me say uh, that it's indeed an honor to join this conversation and I would like to thank the Hellenic, the Hellenic Initiative for the invitation and of course Peter for your very many kind words. Uh, it's always a great pleasure to communicate with our diaspora. I'm sure you have heard a number of cliches over the years. Let me just say one phrase, one sentence that comes from my heart that I do hope to trace you after all these difficult years, these years of hardship, you can be as proud of us as we are proud of you. Turning to the Great Walk. The Great Walk is a major urban reinvention. What is the basic idea? The basic idea is to unify our archaeological sites, to create more living space, to actually reclaim breathing space. Practically, we're talking about seven kilometers where one can walk uh, and enjoy the city. Uh, 50,000 square meters are being liberated from cars. You know, Athens actually has three European records. It's a city with per capita with the most uh, square meters in our homes. It is a city per capita with the less green. And it's also the city per capita with the most roads, with the most asphalt. So what we're trying to achieve is to bring a new balance, a balance between the driver, the passenger, the one who walks, and the one who cycles, like Peter at Victoria just the other day. And of course, this is a difficult undertaking because we are actually transitioning to a new era. But I think we're getting there. Right now, we are actually implementing a pilot project we have actually adopted the methodology of many cities in the Europe and the US. A similar methodology was followed in New York City with Times Square back in 2007, back in 2008. The idea is that before one begins with permanent public works, you actually test the intervention in real life. And why is this important? It's not only important because one can draw vital data and vital information and actually reach credible conclusions. It's also important because this ignites a conversation across the city. Because we want to achieve a, a project which is actually built bottom up rather than top down. And we are very happy moving forward despite the difficulties that we may face. Artemis, you need to unmute Pete. There you go, Pete. <laughs> no problem. 
Um, so, Mr. Mayor, you mentioned kind of the broad idea of the Grand Walk. Where did the funding for this come from? And do you have an estimate on, I know you mentioned like a pilot program, but uh, when this could actually be fully completed? Well, uh, we have already actually secured uh, the sources of funding. It's going to be a mixture of European funds, it's, um, Greek public funds, and donations. Uh, the pilot project, as we, as, we are, as we speak, is being evaluated. Uh, in, at the end of November, we will have reached our final conclusions. I hope that the permanent public works will begin in the first half of 2021. So practically, the whole project will be completed in three to four years. Very exciting stuff. Uh, another project, let's turn to something that is done already. Uh, something I was very impressed with when I was looking up some of the different renovations around Athens is what you've done with Omonia. Uh, I watched the time-lapse video that your administration posted on YouTube. I definitely recommend checking that out if you haven't seen it to reference what we're talking about here, but really took just a barren area and you put it, a fountain with a lot of green space around it. Since that has been done, anything you can share this afternoon and this evening in Greece about uh, whether there's any more growth that's coming in Omonia now going forward because of that project? Well, a couple of things. Number one, Omonia was extremely important to us for symbolic reasons. Because up to now, up to a few months ago, Omonia, which is one of our most central squares, was similar to a mental barrier that actually divided the city into two. We wanted to symbolically reunify the city. And that's why this project was our number one priority. And right now we have a fountain that we can be proud of, a wonderful fountain that actually brings back the nostalgia of the past, but in, very, in extremely modern terms, actually looking to the future. Number two, what is actually happening around Ammonia is much more interesting than the fountain itself. Right now we have more than 20 hotels that are under construction around Ammonia. Some of them were delayed because of the coronavirus, because of COVID, but now they have started moving forward again. So this is extremely important because as you know, last year, Athens had five point five and a half million tourists. And that was a good year, but I believe we can do much, much better. Prague has 8.5 million. So there is a lot of room to grow, sky's the limit, and we need to invest in our tourism industry, we need to invest in the services we offer, and of course we need to invest in social infrastructure to make sure that our visitors not only feel safe and secure, but actually leave Athens as ambassadors of the city around the world. Um, so Mr. Mayor, as you talk about uh, improving parts of Athens, making them more tourist friendly, any other neighborhoods where you think the Omonia model, so to speak, of doing something like the fountain and then hoping development will follow, uh, any other neighborhoods that you think you could do the same thing in now in the coming year? A place like Exadkia comes to mind that I know uh, there's been a lot of issues there with uh, abandoned buildings. Is, is this something that can be replicated in a different neighborhood? Well, it is. And we're actually, we have actually begun with our green spaces, our urban green. So, number one, we have a big project in the National Garden that, began, that begins work within the next few weeks. Number two, we have a big project in Lekabetus, which will, will also begin work within the summer. Number three, we are focusing on Strefi Hill, another big project. And number four, on Plato's Academy. So the idea is to actually take advantage of everything that Athens has to offer. Athens is the Acropolis, but it's not only the Acropolis. It's much more than that. And that is what we're trying to achieve. And therefore, the idea behind the Great Walk is that we can actually connect the Acropolis Museum with the National Archaeological Museum, which is on Patissio. The idea is that Athens is presented not only to the tourist or the, the visitor, but it's also reintroduced to its citizens as a new city that is, of course, extremely proud of its ancient heritage, but is equally proud of its present and its future. Um, Mayor Bakoyani, as you mentioned, a lot of those other growth projects, and thank you for the specifics on some of those different projects you referenced. 
the first thing that comes to mind for me is, you know, we're at a time when coronavirus has really damaged economies all around the world. I know in Greece, obviously, it's already having an impact on our tourism. Many businesses had to close in the spring. How many roughly uh, jobs are projects like these creating? Is this kind of a good economic stimulus to pull us out of the lockdown? All the projects you mentioned. Of course it is. It's a very good economic stimulus. But I want to be very clear and very honest. It's not enough. But there are good news. What are the good news? That right now our Greece and Athens is at the crossroads. And it's not only about bouncing back after the coronavirus. It's actually about bouncing forward. And we all know that to a great extent, there is a very clear and a very strong correlation between the success of a country in containing the virus in its first phase and its economic recovery. And that's something that we see in Greece right now as we speak. The new estimates that came out from the European Commission about the Greek economy are actually more positive and more optimistic than the ones during the crisis or before the crisis. That shows that there is a newfound interest in Greece. It's not just that Greece, you know, it's the sand and the sea, it's not just the culture, it's not just the hospitality, it's much more than that. That there was this unique coalition between the state and its people. There was this faith in expertise. There was this ability to actually transcend partisan and ideological lines and unite forces. And this, I think, sends a very strong message to the world that this country is open for business, that this country is safe for investment. Mr. Mayor, how important is that message? Because you mentioned the crisis. I know for a lot of Greeks in Greece, uh, my family members, but also a lot of us in the diaspora, one of the hardest parts about the economic crisis was just kind of the humiliation and feeling as if we were kind of uh, being beaten down as we were already struggling economically. I sense in all these projects that you're talking about that Athens is kind of getting some, some pride back on the global stage. How important is that to you, that image? Well, it's extremely important to me. You know, enough with the misery, enough with the sadness, enough with the self-pity. Greece has emerged from 10 extremely difficult years, and Athens has emerged, because where Athens goes, Greece goes, with a, very, with a newfound sense of optimism, a newfound sense of self-confidence, a newfound sense of dynamism. And to a great extent, as Peter actually said earlier, this is due not to the leadership of public officials, it is due to the ingenuity of the people themselves. It is due to the resilience of the people themselves. It is because the people themselves don't want to give up. They don't want to surrender. They, want, they actually want to stand with their heads up high. Um, Mr. Mayor, staying on the theme of infrastructure improvements, another thing that I read, uh, both I read that you spoke about it when you were at Harvard here back in the spring, but also uh, read some recent articles about this, is that during the lockdown, your administration really cleaned up a lot of graffiti. Uh, Thysio, Monastiraiki, two of the neighborhoods that I found where you did this. Is that a Band-Aid solution or is there a permanent solution to now that things have been cleaned up to preventing people from uh, graffitiing the clean surfaces again? Because that is something that a lot of tourists notice when they come to Athens. Yes, of course it is. But you know, when we talk about anti-graffiti, it's not just cleaning. It is also using some new material that allows us to keep the walls clean afterwards and for the coming months and the coming years. And that's why we have moved forward in Thysio, in Athenas, in Omonia, in Patision, in uh, Vasilis, Vasileos, Vasilis Sofias, in Vasilis Constantinou. I can name a number of examples. And we do it very, very consciously. And we do it again and again. And we do it deliberately to actually also send the message not only within Athens, but outside Athens, that we are here and we are active and we are not going to give up. And we understand that this job requires, uh, requires us to insist and it requires us to persist. We understand that there are no, no magic wands, there are no new magic solutions. The city cannot change uh, you know, miraculously from one day to the next. But it's about having a clear plan it's about having clearly set out goals. 
it's about moving forward, whatever it takes. Is there a way to crack down on graffitiers? You know, if, if the Athens police sees someone doing something like this, defacing a service, surface that was recently cleaned, uh, are there going to be increased penalties to try and deter this as a problem? Well, yes, the uh, police is alert uh, and the police is vigilant. I should say here that the for, for the first time since uh, the autumn, we actually have a coordination center where we work together institutionally with the police. Of course, we do different jobs, but it's very important that we actually work in tandem and that we actually move forward in an organized way. As a result, there is an increased sense of security in Athens as we speak. Of course, we are not done with illegal activities, but there is, I think, a marked improvement, especially in these neighborhoods that have suffered the most over the years. Mr. Mayor, let's, if we can shift gears a little bit, uh, talk about uh, the economy of Athens. I know you mentioned a lot of jobs being created with this project, but you said these projects, uh, but you said earlier it's not enough. I noticed you launched a new initiative called Athens is Back to help businesses that are struggling with the pandemic get their word out there. Can you walk us through how that works? Well, it's actually very, very simple. What we want to achieve is actually to strengthen the city center. We want more and more people to come to visit, to shop, especially this summer where unfortunately tourism is at the low because, because of the COVID crisis. So the idea is that we actually came up with a project called Athens Back, Athens is Back, where stores, shops offer discounts through this website. And we already see the first results that we have more and more people coming to the city center. You know, there is much that the city center offers. It's a, an authentic center. Uh, it's a center with uh, what with uh, with a character of its own, and it's very important that more and more people come back to Athens and actually, you know, indulge in what the city has to offer. Um, as we talk about helping businesses in the city center, particularly coming out of this uh, coronavirus pandemic, the Hellenic Confederation of Professionals, Craftsmen, and Merchants put out an estimate earlier this year. They said they think about a third of restaurants might not be able to last past 2020 uh, in Greece. When we look at Athens specifically, things like the Athens is Back initiative to raise awareness, any considerations on increasing the marketing efforts this year of Athens as a winter destination or a fall destination so that if the pandemic passes, you can make up some of the lost tourism that's, that's hitting us this summer? Absolutely. That was actually one of the main reasons why there was this, this urgency behind moving forward with the Great Walk. Let me give you an example. When the project began, um, the National Tourism uh, Agency sent out a press release just to Germany saying that, you know, Athens is changing, Athens is being transformed. They had more hits and more views than anything else they had sent over the past one year, more than the sunset in Santorini. And you know, that's very important because Athens does have an amazing brand name. I mean, there's so many cities called Athens in the US and around the world. Athens is, is well, world renowned, literally. So there is a very strong brand that we can build upon, but we have to make sure that it's not just about the brand, it's also about the city itself as a living, breathing organism that's actually moving forward and changing and evolving. Mayor, we've talked a lot about infrastructure. Another thing that struck me that your administration did during the pandemic, Peter actually sent me some background on this. You know, at a time when a lot of people have been left out of work because of coronavirus, you back in April opened a new homeless shelter. Can you tell us a little bit about why that was such a priority for you at this time? Well, we did three things during the lockdown, which we felt was our moral duty because we don't want any Athenian to be left behind. Number one, we recreated and reinvented our Help at Home program, which is now called Help at Home Plus. What actually happened during the corona crisis was that if someone felt weak, if someone felt, faced difficulties, a 
a public servant of the city of Athens would come and knock on his or her door and offer help, offer support. Number two, we created a homeless shelter for 400 people in conditions of dignity, in humane conditions. It's actually one of the largest such shelters in Europe. And what's interesting is that this shelter does three things at the same time. Number what? Number one, it offers a day center. Number two, it offers a, a, a bed uh, for those who actually want to stay for the night. Number three, it offers uh, homes for those, for those who want to stay longer. And the third thing we did is that we actually created a new shelter that didn't exist in Athens, unfortunately, for many, many years for homeless drug addicts. So basically the idea is that, and that's actually happening as we speak, it houses more than 90 people, that people who actually sleep on the street, uh, who sleep on sidewalks, they, we are actually able to get them to the center, which operates as a detox, and then they can find their way to the communities and programs that help uh, with the recovery. It, as we talk a little bit about um, other things that we can do during the pandemic. Um, we talked about Athens is back. We spoke about some of the beautification efforts. Anything else that your administration is working on specifically to support, whether it's businesses or even out of work Athenians, like you mentioned with the first program? Well, there's a lot I can say, but let me just mention one of my favorite projects, which is the digital reconstruction of our city services. We actually have a new e-services portal where people can actually click uh, and get a number of uh, documents without having to visit city offices. I think this is extremely important because it actually helps people, it ends queues, and you know, for, for the first time after a long time, we are actually beginning to build a more citizen-friendly uh, bureaucracy. So is that another example of taking the pandemic and the fact that you were required to do a lot of things online and now turning it into something that in the long run will, will benefit the city and be a positive? Well, you know, uh, a crisis is also an opportunity. That's something we learned the hard way in Greece. Right now, uh, as we speak, we have actually taken advantage of the momentum. We're actually harnessing this opportunity to reinvent ourselves. Uh, it's not easy. It takes time. Uh, change. Uh, it kind of also has its pains, but I believe it's very important that we actually keep faith to this strategy and move forward. Now, I know, Mayor, um, we wanted to take some questions from the audience if they have them. So, of course, if you're watching and you have any questions for the mayor, uh, feel free to write those down. I know we've got Peter monitoring some of those questions and he'll chime in uh, if he sees anything that, that we're going to ask. In the meantime, I do have a couple questions that were sent in already. Um, we talked about some different neighborhoods in Athens, uh, Mayor Bakoyani, not to put you on the spot and make you play favorites, but <laughs> do you have a favorite, Athen, a favorite Athens neighborhood or a favorite spot in Athens if you don't want to say a neighborhood as a whole? Well, it's, you know, uh, I mean, I can mention a number of neighborhoods. Um, I do walk the city every day. I love the city. Um, if you ask me about my roles, but neighborhood to remember the old film of Orson Welles, I would actually mention the National Garden. Uh, I grew up in the National Garden and I only have the best of, you know, experiences and memories uh, from this uh, wonderful spot in the center of the city. As we talk about all these different, oh, sorry, go ahead, Peter. No, no, I was just gonna say we have, go ahead, Pete, we've got, we've got quite a few questions. So I'll go ahead and I'll jump in afterwards with the questions. Okay, sounds good. Um, Mayor, as we talk about the different neighborhoods of Athens and, and you know, the National Garden as an example of a place that you really like, more broadly, do you think now is a good time for foreign investment in Greece? During the crisis, we saw a lot of businesses leave. Uh, is now a good time for a lot of them to come back? Absolutely. Uh, I would say that this is actually an ideal moment to invest in Greece. Uh, there is a clear, I think, sense around the world that there is a very competent managerial approach to government. There is a clear sense around the world that Greece is actually forming. And there is also a great, a clear sense around the world that after, you know, all this 
uh, up and downs over the last few years. The Greek political system is more mature than ever. And of course, there are plenty of opportunities, especially after the economic crisis. Peter, do you want uh, to can I jump in with a couple of questions that we've got? So this is a question from Eleni in Ohio. Uh, Mayor Bakoyani, what is the one thing you've witnessed outside of Greece that you wish you could bring to Athens? Wow, uh, there's plenty. Yeah, that's a big question, I know. Take your there's time. Plenty. Well, um, I think that, you know, what we are actually uh, trying to achieve in Athens it to, is to achieve a new balance, which I mentioned earlier, between the automobile and other alternative sustainable ways of transport. Many cities have done that. It, was, it wasn't easy anywhere. But this is the future. You know, the 20th century was the century of the automobile. The 21st century is the century of actually building sustainable, resilient, resilient green cities that actually upgrade the quality of life. Mr. Mayor, how important, though, is it to change routines if you really want to get people away from uh, the automobile? And with things like the Grand Walk and promoting bicycling and walking, are you going to be devoting uh, the necessary police officers to make sure that those areas are actually respected by people who are still driving and that they don't drive on them? Yes, we are. We are devoting the necessary police officers, but it's not just about the necessary police officers. It's also about having the right urban design. And that is what we're trying to achieve as we speak. And that's why we are actually running this pilot project to make sure that what we do in Athens has been is extremely well thought out, but is also the result of a broad discussion within the city. Uh, I've got another question. This is from John in New York. Uh, Mr. Mayor, where would you like to see Athens in the next five years? Well, there is a global race going on right now between cities. It's a global race for uh, talent, for tourism, and for investment. For a number of years, Athens was absent from this global race. Now we entered this tournament, and I think we can do well. But I understand that it will take a lot of time, uh, but I really believe that we can get there. Okay, I've got a, another question. This is from Xeni in Boston. Um, Mr. Mayor, would you mind telling us what your biggest challenge has been to date as mayor? Well, I think uh, the biggest challenge we have had in these first uh, nine months has been actually uh, to implement the changes that we're implementing the Great Walk in terms of remanaging uh, traffic in Athens. Uh, that means that, as Peter said before, it's about changing long ingrained habits. Uh, this is always difficult, but I am actually thankful for the response and the quickness of the response of the Athenians Actually, because we follow traffic data every day, it's, uh, and if one looks at the curves and the statistics, uh, we are actually adjusting much quicker than most other cities around the world, which shows a lot, I would think, about our people's ingenuity and capacity to change. Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Go ahead, Peter. No, go ahead. Peter, Peter. Yeah. Okay. Um, Mr. Mayor, as we talk, we've been talking so much about the Grand Walk and the, the benefits of shifting people towards, you know, pedestrian or, or bicycle traffic, but any worry that limiting the traffic lanes for the vehicles is going to make it more congested for drivers? No, not really, because it's actually about changing the habits. You know, ex the experts will tell you that if you have more lanes, they will all fill up. So if you have, let's say, in Panepistemia, which I'm sure you know, if you add another four or five lanes, Panepistemia will be full and have a traffic jam very, very soon. 
So it's about actually achieving uh, sustainable mobility, which means a better use of uh, mass transport, a uh, higher quality of mass transport, and also, as you said before, pedestrian traffic. I would just like to add here, you know, because I've, I mean, I live in the center of Athens, like the mayor, I walk everywhere, I ride my bike everywhere. And I remember when um, Athens started pedestrianizing Ermu Street years ago, you know, 16 years ago. I remember when Athens started pedestrianizing Dionisio Pargito and Erpagito and Apostolo Pablo. And I remember the uproar um, that was created around the, the pedestrianization of those streets, you know, and people complaining that it was going to ruin their businesses, it was going to ruin downtown Athens, you know, they were never going to survive this. People were angry, angry, angry. It's similar, I mean, I don't, the reactions don't seem to be as strong now, but it's sort of similar to some of the things I've heard even from close friends, you know, about the, the, these initiatives to create the Great Walk in downtown Athens. But you know, those streets that I mentioned earlier, Ermo, the Universidad de Parguito, Apostolo Pablo, you know, the Macriyanis that were pedestrianized, now they're show places. I mean, you can't even, it's hard to even imagine them, you know, with cars on them, that at one time, you know, they were choked with cars, you know, and, and it seems like the businesses that are on those streets have not only survived, but they've thrived. I mean, I'm sure the mayor has you know, better statistics for all of that. But it seems like whenever you pedestrianize a place, you know, that actually business gets better, it doesn't get worse, um, you know, and that, you know, and that traffic finds a way, um, you know, it, 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 it finds a solution. Um, we've got some uh, other questions. Um, this question just came in about, um, uh, about, well, this is very personal, but it says, you know, could you tell us a little bit about your own political aspirations? Do you want to be mayor forever? Well, you know, serving, serving as mayor of Athens uh, it is a distinct honor. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. I am looking forward to running again uh, in three years. Uh, and I hope to gain the trust of the people to continue with our work. Um, Mr. Mayor, let's talk a little bit about, I think probably some people at home might say that I buried the lead today because a lot of us Greek Americans love going to Greece and right now we can't. Are you hearing anything from the federal level there about the earliest we could maybe see flights from the United States? Well, that doesn't depend on us. It depends on the virus itself. As you know, it is the virus that actually sets the time schedule, not only in Greece, but also in the United States. I can only say that we are very, very much look, looking forward to welcoming you to Greece. Uh, speaking personally, a number of uh, my relatives are in Greece, in the US, uh, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing them up close. A lot of us, one reason we enjoy visiting Greece is to support the Greek economy. You know, we spend money at hotels, we rent cars. I'm wearing, uh, this is 27 wooden accessories. It's a Made in, Greek, made in Greece watch, <laughs> my favorite watch. I wear it almost every day. Um, and I love going and buying, you know, as much as I can there, even gifts to bring back to the United States. For My mom won't accept any gifts, you know, unless they're made in Greece. Um, so if we can't come this summer, this fall, what do you as Athenians need from us? How can we help you come out of this lockdown and start to grow economically and continue your work? Well, first of all, let me say that your mom is a wise woman and you should listen to her. <laughs> all uh, but having said that, I think uh, what we always need your help, not only because you are ambassadors uh, and you are most convincing and persuasive amb ambassadors, but also because you can help with actually facilitating and bringing investments to Greece. Uh, as I said earlier, this is, there is a window of opportunity right now in Greece. Uh, there's a lot that can be done. And yes, there is a lot of money that can be made coming from America. So please consider us and please have us in our thoughts. Mr. Mayor, I have a question here. This is from Tykes in Amsterdam. Um, there are many abandoned buildings in downtown Athens. 
Uh, is there any plan to claim eminent domain and auction off these buildings? Well, actually, we are in talks right now with the central government. There is a working group that has been set up to change the institutional framework and come up with legislation that will allow us to do exactly that. Claim some type of eminent domain, but not auction off the buildings. And have the municipality come in um, and actually um, take advantage of the buildings and invest in the buildings uh, in cooperation with the private sector. Is there any, is there any uh, numbers on how many abandoned buildings there are in downtown Athens? It seems like there's a large number. There is, it's a very large number. Actually, uh, that does not include only abandoned buildings, but uh, so you have a sense of the reality on the ground. There are over 10,000 buildings that are still standing that were built between 1840 and 1940. And these do not even include some amazing um, architectural buildings of the 1950s and 1960s. Well, that's actually another question we have here. Someone's asking whether or not there's a plan to, um, uh, to make uh, the Atriteo buildings from like interwar buildings, not just neoclassical buildings. So buildings of like the 30s and 40s. Some have already been uh, made uh, the uh, Some enjoy other levels of protection from the Ministry of Culture. Uh, this is being examined on a case by case basis. Okay. I've got, now I've got a question from Vasily. Uh, it doesn't say where he's from, although I happen, I must, I sort of think he must be in Athens because he wants to know if there's any plans to upgrade um, uh, the areas of Botanikos or Eleonas. Yes, there is actually a plan um, where there's a lot of talk right now in Athens, especially amongst the fans of Panathinaikos, about moving forward with uh, the new uh, football court. Um, we are actually working on that, and we hope to make, be able to make announcements by the end of the summer. I also saw that um, yesterday three new metro stations opened in Athens, uh, and I know that there's plans for even more to open. Would you like to comment about that as well? Yes, we had three new metro stations that opened yesterday. They carry more than 60,000 passengers. We are expecting the tram to reach Piraeus and the metro to reach Piraeus by, I think, uh, mid-2021, if not earlier. And we're actually right now, the government is actually right now moving forward with the so-called Line 4 of the metro that will add a number of new stations. Mr. Mayor, is there anything specific happening on public transportation now because of coronavirus? Any if tourists are in Greece, are they going to see any specific distancing regulations, extra precautions like that on, on the yes. metro? Yeah, of course there are in public transport, much as there are everywhere. I should say that we're actually very diligent um, and very uh, deliberate and very strict about making sure that we ensure social distances, uh, that we actually protect public health on all uh, levels of uh, social and civic life. I think maybe we have time for a couple more questions. And Mr. Mayor and Pete, thanks again for giving us so much time today. Um, we have a question from Vicky in Boston um, that says, outside of traveling and vacationing within Greece, as Greeks living abroad, what do you see as the biggest opportunity in supporting our fellow Greeks living in Greece? What do you, I mean, asking how can Greeks living abroad support Greeks living in Greece right now? Well, in a number of ways, uh, you can support us. I mentioned a few earlier. I would also add a very simple, but I think very effective way. Uh, spread the word. Uh, yeah. Spread the word around the US that things, Greece is actually changing. Things are looking up. Yes, for a number of years, you know, uh, many of us uh, felt somewhat embarrassed about what's happening in our country. But right now, I think many of us can feel very, very proud. Yeah. I also think you, know, your office, you and your office have done such an amazing job, you know, of disseminating information about projects, you know, that you work on. So 
you know, and it's, so, you know, if you're cleaning, you know, platea, you're cleaning platea, use your Rios, you know, in Kipseli, or you're in Ayos Nicolas, you know, or you're, you know, in Vathis, you know, and you're, you know, you're, you're constantly posting about those things online. And I think, you know, that is just, that's a great, you know, marketing campaign for athletes, you know, um, and, you know, you see how many people are sharing those things. So again, everyone that's listening in and we're sort of getting bombarded with questions right now. But I, I just want to encourage you one more time, if you if you tuned in late, to make sure that you visit the mayors and the city of Athens, Instagram, Facebook, you know, and Twitter pages. Like, make make sure you clue in on those because they're loaded full of information. Um, go ahead, Pete. Oh, Peter, I was going to say uh, I'm on a phone. I can't see the full questions coming in, but I know someone just asked about the Alini Gun project. I know. Yeah. Obviously, Mr. Mayor, that's not Athens, but because that is such a large project, do you anticipate or can you already share maybe some specific growth that you expect in Athens just because that development is coming to Greece nearby? I can share the most positive, positive news, but that, that after all these years, it has begun. Our buildings yeah. are being demolished as we speak. So, you know, in reality, the project has begun and we have moved from words to deeds. And I think it's an extremely important project that I can actually uh, help the whole of Attica and Athens itself. But because Hellenicon is happening, Athens has to change as well. We don't want Athens to be, you know, at the backyard of Hellenicon. We want to have two levels of growth that stand side by side. Yeah, I think that's important. Um, so uh, here's maybe, uh, I know I keep saying just a couple more questions, but maybe just two more questions and then we'll end it, Mr. Mayor. Um, so here's a question from Olymp Olympia. Is, is Athens taking any measures to incentivize Athenian ownership uh, in property? Um, well, um, we are right now, as we speak, uh, we mentioned earlier about our public works. Uh, there is a direct correlation between the value of property and real estate and public works. Public works. You mentioned earlier the Onisiora Pagitu, Apostol Pablo, Bucurestiu, Valauritu, Ermu. All these projects actually help in making the city more attractive in actually welcoming investment. Um, across Athens. So I believe that this is actually the best that we can do uh, to actually be able to help um, homeowners in Athens. Okay, Peter, and then this is, this is from, oh, sorry, go ahead, Pete. No, I was gonna say, after you do one more question from the audience, I got a total Milwaukee Homer question that I gotta just jump in with about Yanni, but maybe we do yours first and then we'll finish right, on that. So this, I promise this will be my last question, Mr. Mayor. Um, this is from Demi in London. Um, and he says, as we speak about buildings and housing, any chance to touch on Airbnb listings? That has been a challenge. Another similar case studies of popular city destinations like Barcelona and Lisbon. It's hard to find property to rent and rents are high. Is there any further regulations on this or news you can share with us? Well, yes, it is a challenge. It's a challenge for all cities um, in Europe and in the US, I think. Each city has followed a, diff a different model, has adopted a different methodology. We were actually about to move forward uh, this summer. We didn't because of COVID, but we are actually working on a plan that we will put forward to the government for the next year. All right, Mayor Bakoyani, I got some of my Wisconsin Greek Americans. I could see them watching live on Facebook. A lot of us are excited because even if we can't fly to Greece yet, the Bucks are supposed to start playing again soon. So I'm going to put you on the spot. Will you be watching our Milwaukee Bucks and Yanni at all from Athens? And do you think they're going to win a title? <laughs> yes, and yes. <laughs> uh, there we go. The answer, although I have to admit, that I'm not at all objective about it because Yanis actually grew up in Sepolia. He grew up in the neighborhood of Athens. So whatever Yanis does uh, is, is correct and he has our full support. People are writing in Go Bucks with exclamation points. <laughs> exactly. 
<laughs> I wish there was a way to track how much Wisconsin tourism there's been to Greece since Yanni came to the Bucks. Because I know there's a lot of people I've met in Milwaukee that have made trips to Greece. And I know I got two coworkers that are planning trips to Greece right now. And he's got a lot to do with it. Well, I just want to, Pete, I want to mention to you, you know, that I think I actually told you this once before, but every time the Hellenic Initiative runs an online campaign, like a fundraising campaign, you know, we track our donations around the United States and around the world. But in the United States in particular, our top donations come from New York and Boston, which are no surprise. And then our third largest group of donations come from Wisconsin. <laughs> That's great to hear. Surprising. <laughs> so. Thank you, Gandhi. Uh, Mr. Mayor, thank you. Pete Zavrykis, thank you very much. I encourage, uh, you'll be able to watch this entire interview on Facebook Live. Uh, I encourage all of you to visit THI's website as well, the thehellenicinitiative.org. Uh, I encourage all of you to watch Pete Zervaikis interviewing Yanis Antetokounmpo again on YouTube. <laughs> and uh, again, please do not forget to follow Mayor Bako Yanis on Instagram, on Twitter, and on Facebook. I don't know if you have any final comments you'd like to make, but otherwise just, I'm handing it over. To I just want to express my sincere thanks. And as I said earlier, I do very much hope uh, and I'm looking forward to welcoming you all in Athens. Thank you. Pete, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.